So now we see some other graphs. Uh, you should now know the difference between spring and neap tides. We'll also look at the, the point of or the flow of water coming in on a tide when a wave, a tide wave essentially comes in, it's called flood tide. When the tide goes out, it's called an ebb tide. And at those two peaks, you have a period called slack water. At, in the center of the ocean, there's no effective tide. It's called an amphidromic point. And essentially, these currents, uh, tide waves, move, rotate around uh, in a form of uh, alternating crests and troughs known as co-tidal lines. You'll see that in a second. Also, we want to know where we are in the vertical dimension with tides. It's extremely important, as we mentioned, for navigation, uh, but other purposes too. So the high tides have a range that we have to uh, bracket over a period of time, known as a tidal epoch. So that's a 19-year time span over which we're measuring the tide uh, elevations, and deriving uh, statistical estimates of them. Uh, that's the same time of uh, bracket of time used for us climatological research, um, you know, studies of means, temperatures, precipitation, and so on. Uh, there are many uh, variations of datums. We typically are interested mostly in the average of the highs, the average of the lows, and uh, the means themselves to estimate, say, mean sea level, which we would typically show on a topographic map, or a mean tide level that we may reference on a nautical chart. So there's two variations here. Uh, you will typically send the, tend to see the mean high water, the average of the high tides, MHW, in GIS and topographic kinds of data sets uh, and maps, whereas you'll see mean lower low water uh, in LLW on nautical charts. So it's important to know what you're looking for and what you need when you interpret your map accordingly. Uh, tide heights are also very, you know, very spatially, and so these are referenced locally. Usually there is a tide gauge or a benchmark um, on uh, channel markers or other types of structures. Uh, so in Norfolk we have Sewell's Point tide gauge and a full-on meteorological station shown here. So in that local area, all of these heights of tidal datums are referenced to a point on this tide gauge. And then when you pull up a nautical chart for the area, such as chart 12253 from NOAA, this is a Norfolk area, so there's a lot of detail on the water, uh, but not a lot of detail on the land, just enough to kind of get your bearings. You will see uh, spots in the channels that indicate the depths. Um, you'll see very shallow areas shown in the blue and channels shown in kind of the light area, certainly other uh, nav navigation markers and uh, even uh, wrecks and um, obstructions. But you want to know what are these units. So typically nautical charts will show these depth points or soundings in units of feet mean lower or lower water in the United States. That will vary in other areas. There will also be variations of this across the map. So even though these depth are going to be uniform given the local area, uh, the tide range over in Portsmouth is going to be slightly different than it is here on the Lafayette River uh, near ODU. So we have to always consult the legend and uh, look at what units are there, such as soundings and feet, MLW. And even look at the table. If we're doing something um, needing very high accuracy and precision, we might want to know then what is the variation of these across a large chart. To get the heights, we then can measure the vertical distance between mean higher high water and mean lower low water to get a diurnal tide range. Or we can get a mean tide range if we're just interested in MHW to MLW. Again, uh, subtle variations it would seem that can make a huge amount of difference. And across the ocean basin, we'll see a lot of variation as well. So in centers of the larger oceans, you tend to see lower tides because the tidal, air, tidal amplitudes are varying around the periphery of the ocean basins. In small enclosed seas and gulfs, such as uh, the Gulf of Mexico or the Caribbean Sea, the Mediterranean, 
the Sea of Japan, perhaps, they're disconnected from the ocean, and so they don't develop as large a tide. They only have the water uh, moving uh, in response to gravitational forces within those enclosed basins for the most part. So uh, as a result, they'll have lower tide ranges, whereas any funnel-shaped areas that are open to the ocean but are a further distance from the center will tend to have high tide ranges. Gulf of Alaska, Bay of Fundy, the North Sea, relative to the um, North Atlantic, and uh, areas of Indonesia, Borneo, New Guinea, relative to the Pacific and Indian Oceans will tend to have higher tide ranges. 